Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat interview, and I'm talking today with Alexio. Hello. Hi, Christian. Yeah, hello everyone. Um, I'm Alexio Chanduana, best in Essex, England. That's great. It, yeah, as uh, I usually say, it's like for people that don't know you, like who you are, what do you do? And you've already said where you are. So what do you do for a living? Yeah, so I'm a solution designer uh, for BMW uh, in the United Kingdom. Oh, do, do you take home free samples? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I always, you know, it, and it, it, it's funny is I, I, so I like in my early twenties, I was so excited. I wanted to go buy like a, I was really into sobs uh, yeah. at, at the time uh, okay. back when that was like a, a thing. And I just thought they were just so beautiful and, and different and how it was less expensive to actually travel over to Europe, buy it new, drive it across the country to a port, put it on a ship, fly myself home. <laughs> wait the 12 weeks or whatever till it shipped over and wow. then to pick it up at the port and drive it home and all of that was cheaper than just going to the car lot and buying one new here in the u.s and i don't know if that's the same thing like can it get it, can you get a deal is there an employee discount <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah the em employees get cars by the way so yeah, <laughs> yeah. the perk right there well yeah. it's very cool so you're in and how long have you been an mvp now of still counting days i think 22 days now <laughs> congratulations thank you that's always uh, very exciting for the uh, the and i and I, again i do like to point out that i don't just interview brand new mvps but so you've got your business applications mvp but uh, yeah, I do talk to people that have been mvps for a long time as well so what was your path to becoming an mvp yeah so from my path um Coming into tech uh, without uh, any university background or tech background, uh, starting my journey on Facebook, uh, chatting with uh, Ben Volma, getting some guidance from Ben, and then eventually getting into tech, right? So at this point, it was uh, the community aspect of it, where I've never known who Ben was, but uh, he was there to help me out. So from my perspective, I decided to help others uh, onto the path uh, mm -hmm. of uh, tech, how they can get on onto the Power Platform or the Microsoft tech in itself. So decided to create uh, a user group, which is uh, Power Platform Africa. So we have 237 active uh, new learners wow. on the Power Platform. That's fantastic, congrats. Yeah, so great, yeah. So we have people, uh, of course the name is Power Platform Africa, but it is for everybody. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, 21 uh, students in the Americas. Uh, we have students in the UK. We have some students in Africa and uh, one or two based uh, from the Middle East. So the whole idea was to kind of get them started of what the technology is. So of course, you don't want to force them to kind of learn the technology, right? So the first thing I always look to do is to explain what the Power Platform is, what Dynamic is all about, or what's involved within Microsoft. So from there on, because I focus mainly on Power Platform and Dynamics 365, CE, introduce them to the Microsoft course, which is on Udacity before getting to Microsoft Learn. So it gives them a guided path to create an app, right? So once they have an app, they get to a point where they feel confident or they think, okay, no, 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 this is not for me, right? So what I have, uh, I have a calendar. They have access to my calendar Mondays and Thursday between 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. So similar setup to yourself. Uh, the yeah, book do like time in there. Office hours. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So the book time in, we discuss what challenges they're seeing, what they think about the technology, where they want to take it to. Uh, and then uh, on Saturdays, uh, we have sessions where we actually demo uh, some of the components and what they need to understand to build the foundation of the technology. And then in some occasions, we invite other speakers to come and speak about uh, the technology best practices, what things to look out for, what are employers looking for? Yeah. So yeah, so we keep going with that cycle. Uh, this year, we've managed to get eight people uh, in the UK and Americas into employment. And uh, so far, I can confirm eight of them have passed their probation periods. 
and uh, they're doing well. So yeah, it's a, a cycle to help others. So when I started, it was about giving back to the community, making sure people see the opportunity and what Microsoft Tech can actually do for them. So it's not just a power platform. Uh, in some cases, someone says, oh, I want to learn Office 365. Uh, okay, I'm not a specialist at it. So what I always do is reach out to the community on Twitter, ask if there's someone available to help, and then connect the two people, the experienced person and the learner, and then get them going and also just check in to see how they're getting on. You know, the hardest part for somebody coming in that wants to learn about that is just like being nervous about reaching out to somebody like you, you know, yeah. anybody within the community is like, like you have to get past that, that barrier. And look, yeah. if, if people are too busy, you know, it, it, like if I got a bunch of things that's going on with my yeah. day job or family or things around there, I may not respond right away. Or I might just say, it's like, Hey, what you're really looking for. So it's beyond what I can help you with like right now, yeah. but Hey, let me plug you in or let me introduce you to somebody around that. I mean, that's the connectedness of the community is something that is just incredibly powerful. And I always say this, and I'm sure you say the same thing. If yeah. I don't know the answer to your question, I probably know somebody who does. And, yeah. and so can introduce you there. And so get plugged in, get started that way. The other side of it is that there's so much content that's out there that's part of the community and, and so, and, and well, I, I can't speak for your community, but I imagine you're pretty welcoming to anybody that wants to sit in, get involved. And if they feel like, you know, of, of like mind and, and are, are excited by in the community that, that you've built there, they'll stay plugged in. It's just, there's so much that's happening virtually now, like yeah. just find that birds of a feather, find that, that group of people where you feel comfortable and then just have these conversations and people learn more, faster, you know, uh, more uh, uh, completely around these, these platforms as part of a community than you would ever do, like go and try and figure it out yourself. Yep. So, yeah. So the critical point is, yeah, someone saying, okay, I'm not too sure about this or I want to learn this. So in some cases, it's kind of breaking it down. So... Of course, you can talk about Azure being the foundation of the Microsoft tech, mm -hmm. uh, and then being not an expert at that tech, then look for someone to kind of help them out. Because I, I've had two students come up and they say, okay, this whole Power Platform and Dynamics is not for me. I just want to know about Azure. So again, to make sure they feel part of that community, uh, you're not kind of saying, okay, this is not for you. Get someone in, they sit on it, they start learning together and the outcome from that is a few more others then raise their hand up. Oh, I wanna have a look at that as well. So you're kind of opening up the opportunity by keeping them on board and then asking a community colleague to come and join us as well. You know, and this is more kind of a question. So there's, there's an individual over in the kind of the collaboration side, the SharePoint and Teams world who, uh, uh, Vlad Katranescu, who's a really good friend um, who, his blog um, is, uh, so if you go and, and look up Vlad you know, Katranescu, you can find him. Um, yeah. Very popular out there, has tons of learning courses and things that he's done uh, with Pluralsight and elsewhere. But one of the things that he does that's really powerful is his blog is a primary resource for training materials. He has gone and said, well, like, hey, if you want to go and get certification, if you want to you know, back in the uh, uh, Microsoft master days when they had those programs around. But if yeah. you want to go towards these certifications, he provides guidance on free and paid training, the various the books that are out there, resources that are online for that. I don't know if something like that as comprehensively of, as what Vlad has built exists over in the power platform. That's actually maybe an opportunity for you or somebody else out there to go and compile all the resources so that there's a one one place to go to where you could point and say hey you're interested in going and and becoming an expert here are materials here's the microsoft certification courses and yes those cost occasionally there there's free offerings and things out there but there's a yeah. lot of the there's a lot of the learning out there. Like you mentioned, there's, there's edX and Udemy and other training resources, which are free. And you're constantly seeing like certifications in Azure specifically of yeah. people out there via LinkedIn and other social channels sharing like, Hey, I just got my, so my certification. 
all yeah. of those things which lead up and will help towards those formal Microsoft certifications, which are fantastic on your resume. Well, all of those things are and building yeah. up those schools, the, those skills. But there's a, you know, again, there are resources out there. There is a path forward. If you don't have a dollar to spend, you can still get started and start building and learning and get these certifications all within the cloud, all for free, and then tap into the community. Uh, there's just so much that's available these days. Yeah, so one of the things um, which uh, we have encouraged most of the learners is once they're comfortable, is to sign up uh, to the fundamentals exams uh, for mm -hmm. Power Platform, which is a PL900, which Microsoft currently generally is giving you for free at the moment. You attend the webinar, you learn, you go see the exam. So we have quite have a few of them who have gone to attend the exam. Uh, one or two have failed, but they never gave up. They went back in and passed the exams. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the idea of having um, uh, either a site uh, with those links to those resources will be really useful. So it's definitely something I'll take on board and uh, I'll put that on my blog. So I also have a blog, which is uh, alexchandwana.co.uk. So I'll put that on the page and then share with the community, anyone who wants to kind of dig, dig, dig deep dive into the resources and see what the Power Platform and Dynamics has to offer. And if somebody's watching this video too out on YouTube uh, or finding it via other social, of course, you can also go to, I'll provide all the links to all of Alexio's uh, contact information at his blog, uh, Adam Buckley Planet. And so the, the MVP Buzz Chat series, at the top of my blog, I have a link list of all of the interviews of all the MVPs as well. So you can scan through and you can see like, again, all the business applications, MVPs, office apps and services like myself, enterprise mobility, which is you think of like uh, uh, the uh, uh, config manager and kind of all the other uh, you know, IT pro type capabilities. So, uh, and plenty of other uh, MVPs across multiple areas, bunch of Azure MVPs as well. So it's, it's great to, uh, you know, I love cataloging that and, and to, again, help shine the light on fellow MVPs and the things that they're doing. So what else is going on? What else, uh, like, are you doing other events? Is there anything that you're really passionate about right now that we could highlight? Yeah, so for me, one thing uh, to highlight is uh, the community has kind of helped me to kind of keep challenging myself. So back in December, we had uh, a virtual uh, pub in London. We catch up with colleagues from different regions and then came across um, a colleague based in the, in the US. And uh, believe it or not, this was 12 midnight. And I said to him, look, I need to kind of step up a bit more. At the point I was a functional consultant, right? I said, I wanna step up a bit more and advance my career. What advice do you have for me? He goes to me, the choice is yours, right? You need to tell me what you want to do for me to help you. Yeah. So I said, I want to move to be solution architect. So he goes, okay, no problem. So believe it or not, UK time, it was 1 a.m. The colleague says to me, let's set up a Teams call at 1 a.m. in the morning at that time. So we had a separate call from everyone. And he gave me some guidance on uh, how to actually move from being a functional consultant and what is the expectation as a solution architect. So the advice is to me, you can start as a solution designer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, see how you feel at that point and then look what is required as an overall solution architect. So if you get stuck, give me a, a shout and I'll help yeah. you. So at that point, that's what pushed me. So I said, you know what? Let me go and understand what a solution architect does. So I started asking questions, started uh, reading material uh, the solution architect material back then, it was uh, the MB600 materials looking at. Mm -hmm. Then, um, yeah, back in January, decided to apply for a job at this organization I am at now. And uh, yeah, uh, I was being truthful to them. I said, look, I know the role you're looking for as a solution designer. I'm not experienced enough for it, but I, I'm happy for the challenge. And yeah, the offer came. And now uh, here, yeah, still there now, uh, helping with the project, moving from on-prem to the cloud. So there's a lot of things to learn, but at the same time, it goes back to the community where someone takes their time away from your pub before they got drunk, right? Yeah. And they share some information to you. Yeah. So yeah, so for me, the community is always great. Um, there's a lot of uh, folks uh, in the community 
Uh, you have uh, Victor Dantas in the US, Chris Huntingford, Trisha Sinclair in the UK. Um, whenever you need, that's just a small list, but uh, there's quite a long list of um, colleagues in the community. You need any help, you need advice, they're always there to help. So for me, that community aspect of it goes a long way. And not, as I said, and not being shy, like to, to reach out and connect, especially if there's somebody that has the MVP title. I mean, we're like, I, I like, again, I don't want to speak for you. It's like, but if somebody reaches out to me, I'm going to try and help them. Like, please reach out to me. If there's, you know, we, we're, uh, you know, different backgrounds and technical focus. I'm more of a marketing guy, uh, yeah. but I've been in tech my entire career. And so I had you know, occasionally we'll get people and saying, it was like, well, what? roles like i'm in marketing side of it i really want to get over in the it side like what opportunities yeah. are there i'm like well do you have an hour let's let's have a conversation and really dig in and see what i can do to to help there i don't always have that that much time open around that but it could be an ongoing conversation and again a series of introductions that could happen but it all begins with a person like you did saying hey i'm really interested in following this path where do I go? Where do I start? And then asking, tapping the community and asking for that help. That's where it begins. Yep. So, yeah. So for me now, the challenge is uh, to get other folks out there who haven't spoken in the community to say, yeah, come and share your knowledge. Uh, because uh, I've come across some colleagues I've worked with and uh, they're not so sure uh, how they're going to start in terms of speaking in front of a public. Uh, so I'm always kind of encouraging them to say, look, um, we all learn every day, right? So whatever you want to share, there's bound to be some people in the crowd who are going to learn from you. And at the same time, you're sharing your experiences. So experiences are always going to be unique, right? You're not going to have exactly the same experiences on a project. There's always different challenges. So for me, the challenge is to help all the new speakers as much as possible. So looking forward to the Scottish Summit, uh, which is yeah. coming up in yep. 2022. Uh, I've also signed up to support uh, new speakers. So I'll be supporting new speakers for the event. Yeah, I saw that. I, I considered uh, submitting to that as well, just because I love, so my family, like we have heavy Scottish roots. And so in fact, I think it's like 16 generations I can map back to Edinburgh. So uh, oh, on nice. my mother's side. So uh, yeah, the if, if your last name, if you're from Scotland or Northern uh, uh, UK and your last name is Richardson, we're likely related. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, but, um, but anyway, it, yeah, it, it's, um, that is a, I'll tell you, that is a challenge to try and get people that have never presented before who have great experience to get them to come participate I mean, that's a scary thing to go and do if you've never presented. I mean, any any kind of guidance on that? What do you do to get people to uh, to share, to, to do it that first time? So in my case, right, um, I was always scared myself to speak. And then I saw a tweet uh, back uh, a year ago now. No, a year, was, you know, a year but uh, two years ago now. And uh, within that tweet, there was uh, an ask to help other people start get started. And uh, this was by an MVP in the United States, uh, Mary Thompson. Mm -hmm. So I had a chat with Mary. So she scheduled a team's call. We had a chat and I said, look, I would love to speak, but uh, I'm scared. I'm a bit nervous, right? Yeah. So she says to me, there's nothing for you to be scared. Uh, what you are sharing, there's someone to learn from it. And at the same time, just be yourself and share it. So one of my first speaking events was that uh, Believe it or not, I did submit to Microsoft Ignite and I was uh, accepted. <laughs> so at that point, uh, I was accepted to a table talk and uh, I was really nervous. But again, the community, the colleagues I had on the panel, they're very supportive and we all kind of assigned each other roles of how we're actually going to communicate that. And then from there, I then had a mentor based in the UK, uh, Trisha Sinclair, uh, to help me prepare for this talk. So the technique uh, which we used here was for me to write down what I want to speak about, what I'm passionate about, mm -hmm. and uh, who the target audience is. So once I write down my submission, share with them, so, okay, what do you think? Do you think uh, I can submit this uh, for this event? She'll be like, okay, yeah, but uh, what you put there is not really ideal. Uh, so I, I would encourage you to change it. 
go back and change it. Keep asking the question, what do you think now can it? Then after submission, of course, there's a whole wide community who want to speak at these events. So sometimes you don't get the opportunity, but right. uh, the opportunities which came my way, of course, you got to prepare for the presentation, right? So I'll prepare my presentation. If there's a demo, prepare it, then run it through with Tricia, just start to make sure I'm comfortable, I'm confident, I'm not missing anything in the presentation. Yep. And one thing which I was always losing, timekeeping. <laughs> so, right. well, and that's why you know having the, I mean, one getting feedback, and that's again yeah. somewhere it's a great exactly. If you outline, you've got your abstract everything, but if you structure what you want to present, whether you have you know, 20, 30 minutes to present, or you have 45 to 60 minutes, like a full session to go and yep. do, whether you need to leave time for Q and A at the end, all those kinds of things, but is yep. to go and run through it by yourself, record it on your desktop, and then go back and, and look at it. The other thing, while look, it's painful for everyone at every level to watch yourself present and to go back and listen through that, but you can yep. learn from that. Um, one of the one of the best lessons that I ever had was um, uh, from a, a gentleman who was keynote in a, an event that I put together, where he was doing more of a kind of a business topic in this tech event, and but he was doing it was a fantastic keynote. Uh, he had a person sitting there in the audience that came with him and essentially was going through. This was a new keynote that he was giving. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was sitting there and taking notes as he was presenting. And I was like, what are, what are you doing? And he, he says, well, this, I had this person come along. He says, I actually paid them. So they're helping him out. So, uh, you know, but this, this was this guy. He was a, yeah. you know, a, a high priced keynote presenter at this session. Yeah. He says, but he was taking notes and looking at audience reaction. Did people applaud at the right time? Did, did, how did this land, this joke, this story, this demo, this example that I gave and notes. And he was constantly fine tuning it. I realized that's an extreme case, Yeah. but that's something about you learn by doing it. And so I would even suggest if you, it's the first time, like go and capture it, record it show it to some people or publish it out on YouTube and then point people to it and say, can you give me feedback from that? And they could yeah. give you, say, give me feedback on my presentation skills, as well as the examples of what you thought was funny, what you thought was good, whether the, the, the demo, I went down too much in the weeds around this, or I didn't explain enough about something else. It's great to get that kind of feedback, refine that all before you've done it in front of a live audience. So I'd highly recommend that you go and do that. And then again, tap into the community and get feedback from people. Yeah, definitely makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so yeah, uh, we'll give everything to make sure we get um, more folks who haven't spoken uh, at uh, community events to, to, feel, uh, to feel part of it so they can share because uh, I'm pretty confident uh, we have so many people in the community uh, who have a lot of things to share, uh, but it's just uh, getting them to be confident, to be comfortable. So yeah, we should see so many speakers coming up soon. <laughs> I, I, I know that's a, it's a constant thing. You think of you know, in business as well as in community, it, it, you yeah. want to constantly be planning for the future. And what are the future leaders, the future voices around that? So we should all be out there constantly looking for and encouraging and supporting people that are coming up through the through the ranks and uh, and learning this and so i really appreciate your your time today your, your background your story uh and you know people that want to get in contact you know contact with you reach out to you what are the best ways to connect with you yeah so they can connect with me on linkedin so it's uh, alexio chanduana uh, they can also connect with me on twitter so that's uh, alex chanduana that's the handle and at the same time, on my blog, uh, alexchanduana.co.uk, you also have links to contact me from there as well. But uh, anyone who follows on Twitter, LinkedIn, always open to a conversation. So I always encourage everyone, if you want to have a conversation about the Power Platform or Microsoft Tech, just open up the questions and uh, we can have a discussion. Awesome. Thanks so much. Well, it was great connecting with you. Thanks, Christian. Thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Wow. Wow.